Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shivangi Mishra. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 22nd of June. Australian Defence Minister meets Indian counterpart in New Delhi to boost ties. Deadly earthquake kills at least 920 in Afghanistan, toll likely to rise. And crisis at Sri Lanka plans donor conference with China, India and Japan. And now for all the details. Australia's Defence Minister Richard Marles held talks with his Indian counterpart Rajnath Singh on Wednesday in New Delhi to enhance bilateral defence cooperation. Marles is on a four-day visit to India to boost ties between the two countries. Australia's Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister Richard Donald Marles was accorded a ceremonial guard of honour on Wednesday as he arrived for talks with Indian Defence Minister Rajnath Singh in New Delhi. Marles is on a four-day visit to India to enhance bilateral cooperation between the two countries. During the meeting attended by India's top defence officials and Australian dignitaries, Rajnath Singh said, bilateral defence cooperation is an important pillar of comprehensive strategic partnership and an important factor of stability in the Indo-Pacific region. Bilateral engagements have diversified across a wide range of cooperation area from political exchanges to defence partnership. Recently concluded free trade agreement, commerce, joint research, cultural and people-to-people -people relations. Definitely, bilateral defence cooperation is an important pillar of our comprehensive strategic partnership. Our close defence and security cooperation is an important factor of stability in the Indo-Pacific region. Earlier on Wednesday, Mal's held talks with India's Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar. They both agreed on the importance of strengthening strategic partnership to effectively address contemporary challenges, Jay Shankar said on Twitter. On Thursday, the Australian Defence Minister also laid a wreath at the National War Memorial in New Delhi as he paid his respects to the soldiers killed in armed conflicts post-independence of India. Relations have deepened between Australia and India as both the countries seek to balance China as the dominant Asian power. India's ruling Bharatiya Janta Party has nominated Draupadi Murmu, a female Indian politician from a tribal community, as the presidential candidate. If elected, she will become the first tribal and the second ever female president of India. The presidential poll will be held in July. A female Indian politician from a tribal community, 64-year-old Draupadi Murmu, has been nominated as presidential candidate by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ruling BJP, the Bharatiya Janata Party, officials said on Wednesday. A veteran politician who has held senior posts in eastern Odisha state, Murmu is almost certain to be elected as BJP holds a majority in the parliament and is likely to get the support of other parties in the state assemblies. India's presidential post is largely ceremonial. The election will be held in July. PM Modi in a tweet said, I am confident she will be a great president of our nation. Shrimati Draupadi Murmu, inko Rashtrapati ka pratyashi ghoshit kiya gaya hai, NDA ki taraf se. Born in a family of the Santhal tribe, Murmu started her career as a school teacher and actively participated in tribal rights issues. She later joined mainstream politics and served as a lawmaker and governor of Jharkhand state. Meanwhile, Indian opposition parties have nominated Yashwan Sinha, a former finance minister and a BJP rebel, as the candidate for the presidential election. Efforts were intensified in Bangladesh by authorities on Wednesday 
for delivering food and drinking water as millions of people continue to struggle due to floods triggered by heavy rains. At least 36 people have been killed and about 4.5 million people stranded so far, officials said. Authorities in Bangladesh intensified efforts on Wednesday to deliver food and drinking water to millions of people struggling after heavy rain unleashed catastrophic flooding across a quarter of the country. Air Force and Army personnel were engaged in providing emergency humanitarian relief as at least 17 of the country's 64 districts, mostly in the northeastern Silhet region, were reeling from the natural disasters, officials said. Authorities said at least 36 people had been killed and about 4.5 million people stranded so far. The floods are also threatening to disrupt agriculture, infrastructure and clean water supply. <laughs> Meanwhile, in India's northeastern Assam state, at least seven people were killed in the last 24 hours, taking the toll to 44 during the current wave of flooding that began about a fortnight ago, officials said. India's National Disaster Management Force said in a statement that 14 teams were pressed into action in the heavily flooded district of Assam, where about 5.5 million people have been displaced. About 3.7 million are staying in government-run makeshift shelters on raised embankments or other high grounds. Moving on, political activists and locals recently held a massive protest rally in Gilgit, Baltistan over rising inflation in the illegally occupied region. That has made life difficult, especially for the poor. Some of the protesters said that the storm of inflation has fallen on the people like an atom bomb. Political activists of the Awami Action Committee and local residents in Gilgit, Baltistan recently held a protest over soaring inflation and against the abolition of subsidies which are particularly hitting the poor and middle classes in the illegally occupied region. The protesters claimed that due to a cut down on subsidies on a number of food items, including wheat by Pakistan government, the inflation has gone through the roof. They accused the Pakistan government of pushing more and more people into abject poverty through its failed economic policies. <laughs> The protesters said the subsidies given to them are not a charity but an obligation set by the UN charters since it is a disputed territory. They said Pakistan government has repeatedly turned a blind eye to the problems faced by the people and territories under its illegal occupation. In news from Afghanistan, an earthquake of magnitude 6.1 killed at least 920 people in Afghanistan on Wednesday, officials said, with more than 600 injured. The toll was expected to rise as information trickled in from remote mountain villages. Helicopters were deployed in the rescue effort to reach the injured and fly in medical supplies and food, Salaluddin Ayubi, an interior ministry official, said. Wednesday's quake was the deadliest since 2002. It struck about 27 miles from the southeastern city of Khost, near the border with Pakistan. Most of the confirmed deaths were in the eastern province of Paktika. Habatullah Akhundzada, the supreme leader of the ruling Taliban, offered his condolences in a statement. The disaster comes as Afghanistan grapples with a severe economic crisis since the Taliban seized power last year and has been cut off from much international assistance because of sanctions. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Senge on Wednesday told the parliament that the country will call India, China and Japan to a donor conference to drum up more foreign assistance to find a way out of its worsening crisis. He added, once an agreement with the International Monetary Fund is reached, the government would focus on a plan to increase the country's exports and stabilizing the economy. <music> 
Sri Lanka's newly elected Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe on Wednesday told the parliament that his government will call China, India and Japan to a donor conference to drum up more foreign assistance to find a way out of the worsening economic crisis amid ongoing talks with IMF, the International Monetary Fund. The Iron Nation of 22 million people is struggling with its worst financial crisis in seven decades, unable to import essential including food, fuel and medicines because of a severe shortage of foreign exchange. Vikrama Singhe said that they have made progress and discussed multiple points including fiscal policy, debt restructuring and direct cash transfers with the IMF and the staff level agreement is likely by the end of the month. It is no easy task to revive a country with a completely collapsed economy, he said calling for opposition support for his economic recovery plan. He also informed a high-level delegation from India will arrive on Thursday for talks on additional support and a team from U.S. Treasury will visit next week. India has so far provided around $3 billion worth of assistance, including a $400 million U.S. dollar swap and credit clients, totaling $1.5 billion. In news from Nepal. Hundreds of students held demonstration in Nepal's capital Kathmandu on Tuesday and burnt effigies of Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba to demand the rollback of recent hike in fuel prices. Nepal's annual retail inflation has accelerated to a six-year high, raising the risk of social unrest. Student unions affiliated to Nepal's ruling coalition party CPN Unified Socialist and the opposition CPN UML on Tuesday held demonstrations in capital Kathmandu over the recent hike in fuel prices and demanded the rollback of the decision. In a sign of growing public discontent over rising inflation, the protesting students held a torch rally for a second day and burnt effigies of Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba and the finance and supply ministers and demanded their resignation. The state-owned Nepal Oil Corporation has brought the price of one litre of petrol to rupees 199 and diesel to rupees 192 after a 12% and 16% hike, respectively. Fares for public transport and goods vehicles had been increased by up to 7.7% following the fuel price increase, local authorities said. Nepal's 29 million people are facing a surge in food and energy prices, raising the risk of social unrest. Annual retail inflation accelerated to a six-year high of 7.87% in mid-May. Earlier on Monday, Supplies Minister Dilendra Prasad Badu told a parliamentary committee that the fuel price hike was necessary because of an increase in global oil prices and to help the loss-making NOC to pay for import. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Australian Defence Minister meets Indian counterpart in New Delhi to boost ties. Deadly earthquake kills at least 920 in Afghanistan, toll likely to rise. And crisis at Sri Lanka plans donor conference with China, India and Japan. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.